Hi there, Chem 20s. Today's topic is, does it dissolve? Does it dissociate? Or does it ionize? What happens to a solution in water? So Arrhenius is this uh, famous scientist dead guy that decided and basically was the one that came about with what happens to a substance when you put it in water? Does it dissolve? Well, if all it does is dissolve, then it just becomes a solution. So he talked about non-electrolytes, molecular things like sucrose. So we start out with a molecule and then all this water is attacking it. It stays as a molecule. This is a molecular compound. It's not made of ions. It's name, made of non-metal elements. And so it's molecular. So because there's no ions, it doesn't conduct electricity. And so we call this a non-electrolyte. Okay, you need ions in solution to make a conducting solution. So that's what happens with molecules. They dissolve. What about an ionic compound? Ionic compounds are made from a metal ion which is a positive cation, and a non-metal ion, which is a negative anion. What happens, something like salt, when you put it in water? Well, it is definitely going to dissolve. But in fact, because it's already made of ions, it dissociates, it breaks apart into those individual ions. Because water is a polar molecule, the negative end of that water molecule is attracted to those positive ions, and then the net positive end, the hydrogen end of the water molecule, is attracted to the negative anion. So we see that ionic compounds already made of ions, they dissociate, they break apart into their ions in solution. So now that you have ions in solution, it's going to conduct, and now you have an electrolyte solution. Okay, so looking at our uh, substances when they behave in water or what they do in water, how they act in water, we can talk about this process of dissociation. So when you have a soluble ionic compound, like I just mentioned sodium chloride salt is an example of that, we started out with a solid solute and we took and we dumped it into some water and guess what? Well, it dissolved. Not only did it dissolve, it also broke apart into its ions. And so we call that it dissociated. So we see that it doesn't stay just as sodium chloride. It now becomes individual sodium and chloride ions. And you'll notice that now there's a change and we see the state has changed. We write aqueous, AQ. Why? Because now each sodium and chloride ion are dissolved in water. Water is the solvent here. So swimming around, not really, I'm just using that word. They don't actually swim. But in the solution, what do we see? Well, we see these negative cations, the chloride ions, and we see the positive and a plus did i just call that guy an anion i hope i did it's negative it's an anion the sodium is a cation it's positive think about it's a cat it has paws that's a paw and so we've got these sodium cations and potassium or sorry chloride anions in solution so it's no longer a solid it is dissolved and in fact it has broken into its ions it has dissociated so here's another example of a solution another ionic compound this time is copper to nitrate and we see that when we are writing out this dissociation equation the two from here we had two nitrate ions now becomes the coefficient and there's two nitrate ions for every one copper ion so we see that it dissolves and then in uh, on top of that it is going to then further dissociate
It's only going to do that if it is soluble in water. So how do we know if it's soluble in water or not? Well, we look up our solubility table. Here's our example, AgCl solid. So I'm going to pull up our solubility table. Here it is. All right. So I have this compound AgCl, and I have to decide, is it soluble in water or not? Well, here's the anion chloride. I'm going to look down. Oh. Most things are very soluble. We would write aqueous for most things. That's right. When we did NaCl, it, like most things, is going to be very soluble. But, wait a minute, you're not done yet. Here is your silver ion. So it's not like most things. It's not very soluble. Actually, it's only slightly soluble. So that means that its state is going to be a solid. That means that it will not be able to break down into its ions. It will not dissociate in solution like NaCl would. NaCl will dissociate. AgCl will stay a low solubility compound called a precipitate. Okay, so back to our notes. When we look at Ionic compounds, they're on that chart. Let me go back to that chart for just a second. Look at what it says at the top here. It's solubility of ionic compounds in water. But what if we are given something that's not on the chart? For instance, what if we are given molecular compounds? Well, molecular compounds, we are going to have to look and decide what kind of a compound are they based on our bonding unit. So we know that salt is going to dissociate, it's going to break up, and it is going to form ions. Why? Because it's made of ions. It dissociates. Ionic compounds make ions in solution molecules can't make ions. They're made of molecules, not ions. So it only dissolves. It's not going to become ions. We say that it dissolves, but it does not dissociate. So I have some examples for you guys here of molecular compounds, right? Molecular compounds are not going to act like ionic compounds because they're molecules. So you have to decide, is that molecular compound polar or nonpolar? Here are some nonpolar substances, methane, propane, octane. These guys do not dissolve in water. So when you're writing out the equation for a compound like methane, it is going to stay the same state, it does not become aqueous. It does not dissolve. So we're not writing aqueous. Sorry, we're writing it stays a gas. These molecules, like ammonia, for instance, is a polar molecule. You guys know that from your bonding unit. And when you put it in water, it is going to dissolve. And so we would write aqueous, right? It doesn't stay as a gas anymore. It is going to dissolve and become aqueous. Okay, so it's polar, it has hydrogen bonds, it dissolves in water easily. So some of these molecular compounds, and you're familiar with most of them, are going to dissolve very easily, but they will not dissociate because they're not ionic. They're not made out of ions. So this chart is a super very important chart that goes through and helps you to decide how am I going to treat a, a compound? If it is an ionic compound, then I'm going to have to look up on my solubility chart. And those guys who are highly soluble, the aqueous ones at the top of the chart, well, they're going to dissociate and they break up into their ions. The guys like we just looked at, like AGCL, who are low solubility, they stay as a solid. Guys like AgCl, calcium carbonate, well, they stay solid. They're not soluble. They are insoluble, and they do not break apart in solution into their ions. Bases are still ionic compounds, but they're special because they have an OH ion in them. So some of them are just like you're going to use your solubility table again, High solubility guys will break apart into their ions. Low solubility guys will just stay solid. So molecular substances, we just saw how to do that. If they are polar and they have hydrogen bonding, then they are going to be soluble and we change their state to aqueous. 
If they are not very soluble because they are nonpolar molecules, then guess what? They keep their state the same. So gasoline, octane, that's an example shown here. Next up, I want to talk to you guys about what happens with acids. Now, acids are special compounds. Acids are able to do a special thing that is called they ionize. So even though they're molecular, they are going to make ions in solution. And we say that they ionize. So bases are ionic. They started out as ionic compounds. They dissociate. They make ions in solution. And that's why they are conductive. That's why when you dip a conductivity meter in, the light will glow. They will be conductive. They are electrolytes. Now, again, I just said acids are special molecular compounds. They are the only guys that can do this. They undergo this process called ionization. They start as a molecule. So hydrochlor uh, hydrochloric acid is an example. We start as the molecule HCl or HCl gas, and look what happens. It breaks up into ions in solution. Now, specifically, they all have the hydrogen ion, right? They're acids, and so they're making ions in solution. We call this special ability. They can ionize. They can produce ions in solution. And that's why they will also conduct electricity. So again, you dip a little conductivity meter in, the light glows. Why? Because they're electrolytes. They are able to break apart into ions. Okay, I'm going to stop the video here. I'm going to have video number two on this in just a minute. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about dissociation, dissolving, and ionization. Okay, that's it. For the time being, I will catch you in a minute. Take care.